Camera speed. Sound production, take one. Action! Welcome to the End of the Fangirls podcast. I'm Sam. I'm Lexi, and we're two girls with a slight obsession of everything pop culture. <laughs> I'm, like, mildly excited for this episode and mildly nervous and not wanting to do it anymore. Uh, no, me either. Um, someone, I'm pretty sure someone suggested this episode. I feel like they might have. Yeah, so we hate you. <laughs> yeah, and this is your fault. Um, but these are TV scenes and movies that make us cry. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, fun fact, I'm not really a crier, so it takes a lot for a show or movie to make me cry. Sam, on the other hand. <laughs> okay, that's the thing. I don't cry at, like, normal everyday stuff, but you put on a movie or a show and I'm done for. I can't handle normal emotions, like other people crying around me or comforting people, but I will cry uncontrollably at movies and TV shows, and I think I'm broken for that reason. I just, I don't like the feeling of crying, so I try to refrain from crying. I know, I know, but I can't, like, I just, I can't cry unless, like, so I've just come to the conclusion I can't cry unless I'm watching something sad. So if I know I need a good cry, I got a whole repertoire. Yes. Like, I can't even cry when something upsets me, (laughs) because I just can't. Like, I'm genuinely convinced my tear ducts are broken. No, mine are too. Like, I just can't. Cry. like my friends cry like once a week and I'm like are you okay like I can't oh my gosh I might cry no judgment if you cry once a week but yeah. <laughs> I'm lucky if I cry like once a month now <laughs> I just kind of sit numbly I'm lucky if I cry like once every six months <laughs> <laughs> just being honest oh uh, I used to cry so much and then I think maybe I just dried out my tear ducts in high school Maybe that's it. Fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess we should just jump into it. Share with us what makes you cry. Because I'm so curious, like, the things. I'm so fine. Yeah, because I feel like everybody cries at different things and scenes and movies and stuff. So, and let us know if any of these are on your list, too. I feel like they very well could be. Some of these, I think, are pretty popular. I'm just going to let everyone know right now, there are some I'm not even going to have to explain. Like, I just sob uncontrollably. Like, I just don't yeah. know why. Um, I can talk about my experience watching it for the first time, but other than that, it's like, I just sob. Fair. Um, yeah, I feel like some of mine are just kind of, like, self-explanatory why they make me upset. hmm Yeah. Do you want to start, or shall I? Um, well, this is, like, a joint one, kind of. Okay. Um, so... I don't even know which one you're going to pick, but (laughs) I'm not ready. Just any death and desperate housewives. Um, Mike's death got me because I was a thousand percent not expecting him to die. And it's the montage. I was just going to say it's the montage. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. If oh. you give me a montage, I'm done for. I yeah. am done for. Montage. It gets me every single time. Um, But the other death that I think both made up both probably is uh, Karen McCluskey's death. Yep. Yep. I can't watch it again. I recently did, well, not recently, like a few months ago, I rewatched from like season four to season eight. And the second uh, Karen got her diagnosis, I'm like, well, that was a fun time. I'm done. <laughs> not uh, finishing this. Um, it was just the whole, just like whole ending scene of like, just flashing back and forth between Brie and I forgot her boyfriend at the time trying to get to Karen and then Lynette, Tom, and Susan all trying to get to the hospital to watch uh, Julie's child being born. I can no longer listen to that song. I was gonna say and then the song (laughs) I'm just like And like you know it's coming. Yeah. But when it finally does like she's been there since season one. Yeah. So it's just, like, so hard. And she's one of my favorites. Yeah. It, like, she's, like, 100% in my top, like, three or four. Absolutely. I think it's really um, Roy's face that gets 
that fully gets me. <laughs> Speaking of faces, though, can we also talk about Ida? Oh, yes. <laughs> because, <laughs> because, yeah, so Ida was Karen's best friend. So when the tornado happens, uh, the house that Ida and the kids and Tom are in collapses. So when, like, first of all, another one, Lex, you have is... Lynette scream after the tornado. So just Lynette's whole reaction to this thing is gut wrenching. But then when the kids finally get out, you're already emotional. But then Karen looks at Tom and she's like, "Tom, where's Ida?" And he doesn't say a word. He just shakes his head. And I'm done. I'm done. It's so sad. <laughs> it's so sad. Like why? And the fact that she risked herself for the kids to save the kids. Because there was no more room under the stairs, and I'm very upset, and I hate it. <laughs> I will never forget watching this that scene for the first time. I was in college. I was like, let me just watch one ep- more episode of Desperate Housewives before I go to bed. It's the tornado episode. How do I end off on the next <laughs> scream? So I have to watch the next episode, and it's like 2 a.m., and I am sobbing uncontrollably, probably have an 8 a.m. the next morning. <laughs> I literally remember watching it and messaging you, and I'm like, I am not having fun. I do not want to watch the rest of this show. I hate Mark Cherry. Oh, it was just... Oh, uh, so it's just, like, bad. it's so heroic, but it hurts me to my very core. So bad. Um, Let's just wrap up the Desperate Housewives moments that make us cry, because the last... Let's be real. The final two episodes make me cry. Just Karen, like, convinced... Spoiler alert... Karen, like, says that... Oh, yeah, spoiler alert for the entire episode here. Yeah. (laughs) And Karen's saying that she killed uh, Gabby's stepfather. Oh, yeah, I killed that son of a bitch. (laughs) Iconic. Yeah. When Susan's driving off Wisteria Lane and everyone's in white waving goodbye, the chills I get. Oh, I get chills just thinking about it. So beautifully done. It, I mean, we're not going to discuss the fact that everyone moves off the lane because I don't want to. That didn't happen. That. What are you talking about? <laughs> that did not happen. It did not happen. But just everyone in white, and like, it really makes you realize how many people died in the show. And you're like, a I wish a lot I'd... of people die in this show. This is not Damn. just comedy. And also, just like Mary Alice watching her, that's um, what really gets me. Oh my God. This whole show. This is clearly our comfort show <laughs> for all the good reasons. Um, I have another one from Desperate Housewives, though, just to fully wrap it up. Um, for me, it's when Edie dies. It's not even, like, when she dies. It's the episode after, and it's the final monologue she gives when she says, it's just the line, and oh, did I live? And then it just fades out to the sky, and ugh. It's, I don't know why. It just gives me full body chills. And it's like, you did live. You did a good, you did a good job. Yeah. And I loved Edie. And her death was, like, so unexpected. Yeah. And, like, she was just becoming, like, a really good person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then her getting, like, her ashes spread on everybody's lawn so she could always be on Wisteria Lane. And I kind of hate Mark Cherry. <laughs> Like, I love him, but I kind of hate him. He, the one thing that man knows how to do is make you make you emotional. He's good at that. Oh, for real, though. Ugh. Damn. <sighs> <I'm sorry. laughs> uh, I, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're done talking about it because I'll start crying now. Um, I'll go to another one that we kind of have in common. Uh, let's just talk about the ones in Riverdale that make us cry. There isn't a lot because it's Riverdale. <laughs> yeah. But Machen Amick can make me cry so easily because she's phenomenal. So let's just the the I had your baby scene is some of the best acting I have ever seen in anything. Yes. Like it's not even a, a scene that like makes me cry. It just gives me physical pain. Like, I feel every ounce of the pain that she feels in that scene, and I don't like it. I think I feel more of FP's pain. Just, like, look at him kind of just, like, his soul being taken out. Yeah, of like, life. she's sobbing uncontrollably, and he's just staring there, and he's just, like, doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to yeah. comprehend it, and... 
It's so good. It's so good. My other one, though, and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Why this one makes you cry? I don't know either. It just really upsets me. But, like, I, I literally had a breakdown at work the next day because I was so tired. I was so emotional. And it's because of this episode. <laughs> I haven't been able to watch it since. But it's the entirety of the Next to Normal episode from Riverdale. But specifically, there is a scene. So the episode focuses around Alice kind of being in like a psychosis kind of thing, not being able to handle Polly being dead. And this scene is when both Charles and Polly, but specifically Polly, come walking down the stairs and out the front door. And Alice's face and just like the sound she makes like the little sob I it causes me so much pain it's so sad and I don't I don't know it just gets me so good but yeah I don't even know I think you just have to watch the scene to like really get it and to have like watched the show to like yeah and that arc just in general that storyline I feel like you have to watch that to kind of get why it's so yeah. heartbreaking and then just like I think it just kind of symbolizes that Alice is finally ready to come to terms with it yeah and let her go and I think Polly walking out that door is Alice's way of letting her go mm-hmm. and it hurts me so much I feel like it also hurt more because we were fully convinced that Polly did not die yeah so like this entire episode I'm like oh my god why are they doing a whole episode dedicated to her she didn't die we didn't see a body and then yeah. this happens and I'm like oh fuck she really did yeah, no, we were gonna... Like, I watched this scene the next day after, and I'm just like, oh my god, like, Polly's dead. You were, like, fully convinced. Yeah, that. I even wrote it in my review. I'm just yeah. like, yeah, Polly's not dead, and then the next week I'm like, so, Polly's dead. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay. Okay. Do you want to do the last one that we have in common? No. <laughs> this, this one really pains me. <laughs> Because I knew, I knew it was coming, and I guessed it correctly <laughs> how it was gonna happen, but I had no idea how painful it would be. Mhm. I have a fun story about this one. Okay, so um, this is Raina James's death <laughs> in Nashville. Um, so I watched the show first before Lexi. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing is, the whole reason I started the show is because I watched Raina's death scene. And I, have I never told you this? No. Oh, okay. So, like, Sanctuary came up on my YouTube recommended. I'm like, oh, how bad can this be? And then I watched it and I started bawling. So then I had to, like, watch the whole episode before that. So I already known this is coming, but I cannot watch them sing Sanctuary after Raina's died. Like, just, it's when, like, Maddie starts crying, and then Daphne and Deacon come up and sing with her. And just, like, also, how do you kill Connie Britton? Like, no. why? What was the reason? I know, Connie, it was your choice, but, like, I don't... I agree. Why couldn't she have just moved away? Exactly. She's, an, she's a you famous singer. Tour. Thank you. <laughs> it hurt. And she came back for the final episode. Not sure. Sure. So, like, why, why, why couldn't you have just lied and say you were on tour? Why did you have to die? And it just wasn't, it was done so crudely. Like, <laughs> so yeah. sudden. You're like, oh, she escaped the stalker, and then all of a sudden she's in a car, and <laughs> the car is in her. <laughs> And isn't there, I haven't watched in a while, but isn't there a whole part where you think she's going to make it out okay, and then she doesn't? No, she does make it with the stalker, with the... With the car, after the car accident. I feel like there's, like, a scene where she's okay, and then she croaks. I, maybe she's, they say that she's gonna get better, but then I think things start to take a turn for the worse. Okay, because isn't that scene where Daphne's singing Make You Feel My Love to Her, isn't she, like, kind of, like, awake and lucid during that? I don't know. I don't want to rewatch to figure it out. There... I... There might have been a part where she was awake. Okay. I think things were looking up. And like I said, I think things start to take a turn for the worst. Um, and it's not fun. even just, like, it's a three-episode event. Yeah. Which makes it harder. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do. 
did not need to cry for three episodes straight. <laughs> no. And I do cry the entire time because everybody is mourning her in this show. <sighs> I regret doing this episode. Oh, do I. I might just go have a nice cry after. I'm going to need to watch a nice happy movie later. (laughs) Yeah. Which I actually can't because I'm on the ER season finale, which I will probably cry at. (laughs) Yeah, you probably will. So my next ones are, it's in the same universe kind of, I guess, uh, but Grey's Anatomy and Private Practice, my next two are from that I could have picked probably like 75 oh sorry I have three from both these shows um I could have picked like so many from Grey's because it's so sad like I think that's kind of its reputation at this point um but my first one is the season eight finale (laughs) um the doctors get in a plane crash and like that's already sad in and of itself But then Lexi is trapped underneath the part of the plane. And, like, Mark is trying everything in him to get her out. But she's just like, Mark, no, like, I'm dying. Like, just hold my hand as I go. Just hold my hand. And he won't hold her hand. And she's like, no, hold my hand because, like, I don't have much longer. Just please hold my hand. And then he finally does. And he's like, you're not dying. It's, It's fine. You're not dying. And they're not together at this point. They had broken up. But then she's, he's like, we're soulmates. Me and you, we're going to live a long, happy life. And she, the last words she says are meant to be. And then she dies. Oh, that's lovely. Uh-huh. And then Mark dies the next episode. Mm-hmm. And the stupid thing about that is he got better. <laughs> oh. He woke up from his coma. He was perfectly fine. And then he died. Well, that's rude. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I did not like that at all. One bit. I I can't do it. It's so flipping sad. <laughs> um, But my other one from Grey's is after Derek dies. I didn't cry when Derek died. I also knew that one was coming before I even started the show. I think that was like a world known thing. You heard that even if you didn't watch the show. Um, But specifically, it's when... It's the aftermath episode when Amelia is talking to Owen and she's about to take drugs because she is a drug addict, but she was sober at this point and she was going to take drugs and she talks with Owen and she's like, I just don't want to feel it. And then she completely breaks down because everything like the weight of it just like hits her. And I know you don't watch the show, but the actress who plays Amelia, every time she cries, I can't help it because her crying face is just so painful. (laughs) Like, I feel like you just need to see a clip of her crying and then you'll understand it. It's so sad. I think just, I mean, Katarina Sforzone is incredible. Um, But my last one is from Private Practice, the spinoff of Grey's Anatomy, Addison's spinoff. And funnily enough, I feel like the show should have made me cry a lot more than it did. But there is one specific moment that makes me cry every single time that I watch it. Like, even when uh, Fran was watching it, I'm just like, wait till you get to this episode. And wait till you get to this scene. Not going to tell you what it is. And I had to, like, look up the episode to remember what it was. And I watched the scene, and I cried again. Um, But it's a scene, so one of the characters, Cooper, he has a son from a previous relationship who he doesn't know about. But then he has to take him in because his mom is dying. She has a tumor. And it's incurable. And so the entire season is basically them realizing that she's going to die. Like, they can't save her. So, well, the first scene that makes me cry is when uh, she is about to die. And she doesn't want him to see her like that. But then she's about to die. And she's like, no, like, bring him in. Like, you, like, uh, Cooper's now wife. uh, She's like, you need to let him see you one last time. Like, he can't not see you. So that gets me. But the part that really gets me is when he's out in the hallway with uh, Charlotte in this one episode and Charlotte's his stepmom and he's like I already have a mom but can I call you mama and it's the look on her face because she's never wanted kids she doesn't like kids but she fell for this kid like she loves him as if he were her own and there's just something about the look on her face 
I don't know. It's just, it's like such a heartwarming moment that it makes me cry like happy tears. But uh, every time, every time. That's great. Izzy, if you're watching this, you know. And if anyone has lost watched Lost, you know there are plenty of moments that just make you uncontrollably sob. The reason why um, I stopped watching. Yes. You've stopped watching for other reasons. But. We'll get to the other one that, like, specifically made me want to yeah. stop because you're talking about it. Um, so there's plenty of moments, like, um, Ben just killing his child um, that he kidnapped. That's a whole nother thing. Um, Juliet dying. Um, literally everyone on the show dying. <laughs> um, but these three deaths just get me all the time um the first one is not penny's boat enough said (laughs) i can't because just charlie i've seen you post about this so many times before i had actually watched the show so i didn't know any kind of context yeah the short name so i love desmond charlie kind of annoyed me sometimes but i didn't like him (laughs) But just for Desmond to know that, like, and Charlie just wanted him to know before he died. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, um, the next one is probably the most depressing one. Um, Sun and Jin dying. It's good. It's fine. No, it's not. Sun Just the fact that they died holding hands confessing their love for each other it's fine no (laughs) it's not um it's it hurts more just from knowing their dynamic when they first came to the island and pre-island and then just them dying together and the fact that also Sun left the island without Jin and then came back to save him and they both wind up dying. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I fucking hate this show. It's fine. It's fine. Um, it's just so good. It like just thinking about it right now is sending me chills. My heart is actually shattering as we speak. <coughs> I'm just picturing it in my head, just the shot. Yep. Yeah, no. That episode was a lot. Every episode of Lost is a lot. <laughs> um, isn't that the same as Not Penny's Boat? I don't think is that so. the same episode? No. Why do I think it was? I think Not Penny's Boat is like earlier on because I don't think they were rescued yet. Okay. I could be wrong. I think I'm right though. I don't know. Never. It's it's been a while since I've seen Lost. <laughs> um, I didn't finish it, so I can't actually say. <laughs> But um, the one scene that I sometimes just watch in case I really need a good cry and I just feel like I need to cry um, is the ending scene. I don't want to talk about it. When you realize they're all actually dead. (laughs) It isn't that part that gets me. This is actually probably the reason that's a little because I was already kind of like not wanting to finish. So I'm like, I'm bored. I just season two is not good to me. But it's, uh, I decided, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to just watch the end scene and see if that'll spark me to finish watching it. And then Vincent comes running out and lays next to Jack, and I literally violently sobbed for probably 30 minutes. And every time I, like, my brother came in halfway through, he's like, why are you crying? I tried to explain it to him, and I started crying. Like, I cannot (laughs) deal. I mean, things with dogs or children are just off limits. (laughs) Dogs, old people... Yeah. Animals of any kind, really? Done. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Um, it's the part where everyone's in the chapel and they're all smiling and hugging each other. And the I'm fact just that like, there's, that's their heaven. <sighs> Chills. <laughs> and then, like, it, it's Jack realizing that they're all dead. <laughs> and, like, talking to his father in the back. And then he goes up to the chapel. I can't talk about it anymore. I'm going to cry. <laughs> How do you make a show about strangers getting stranded on an island so damn sad? Because they're stranded on an island. Okay, (laughs) but the wild is also them stranded on an island, and I don't cry during that. Just give me some badass adventure survival stuff. I don't want to be emotionally destroyed. 
Yeah. I didn't think I was getting into a cry fest when I started this show. No, definitely not. <sighs> okay, I'm done talking about last because I like part of me wants to rewatch the show because I forget <laughs> everything that happened. But like, I can't emotionally go through it again. <laughs> Don't blame you. Do not blame you. <laughs> um, I'll talk about mine next then to get you off the topic. Um, I'm going to talk about Charmed from. 1998 because I think this is the first show that ever truly scarred me emotionally (laughs) um so first let me say I'm gonna talk about the one that makes me cry less um and it's the final scene and I actually when I tweeted about this like last not last year the year before 2020 um because there was a tweet going around about the scenes that make you cry I tweeted about this one and someone agreed with me so it isn't just me But there, it kind of, like, flashes ahead in time, and you see all of them old, and you see Piper and Leo walking up the staircase, and it's just, like, a bunch of, like, the wall is just covered in pictures of, like, them when they were younger, and the kids, and there's Prue on the wall, and I don't know, and then it's the music, and just, like, I got so attached to Charm, so, like, it coming to an end and coming to an end in this way little like 13 year old me could not handle it and I cried so hard and it's just such a it's such a beautiful scene like it's not even sad it's just like the end of an era I guess is how I would best explain it Mm -hmm. which is how I would describe another one that I'm going to be talking about later um yeah it makes me it makes me upset but um the one that makes me more upset (sighs) so I recently did a charmed rewatch I'm like okay yeah I'm gonna watch to like season four because I can't watch past season three, um, but I didn't even finish season three because I knew what I was getting to, and I did not want to go through it again. Prue dying <laughs> has actually traumatized me for life. I remember, like, so, I, like, I started the show, became so attached to it, knew nothing, and Prue was quickly my favorite. Going through, like, a fan page on Instagram, and I found out she died. And I remember just, like, s- sitting down on my floor and just staring at the wall. And I'm just like, no, like, she can't die. There's no way. And then I knew what episode was going to happen. And I'm like, I need to know if this is true. So I waited until everyone in my house was gone <laughs> to watch this episode because I don't like crying in front of people. And I just remember when it happened, I literally screamed at my TV. I'm like, no, no, this cannot happen. Cannot happen. And then there's, like, a scene... Later on, like, four episodes later, when they're still mourning her and her sister Piper, she, like, runs up and starts, like, pounding on the grave. Like, it's one of those, like, ones in the wall. Yeah, and she yeah. just, like, starts pounding on it and is like, how dare you leave me alone? I can't do this without you. Like, <sighs> I don't understand why it had to be that painful. Like, I love Shannon Doherty, but, like, I hate that she leaves all of her TV shows or gets fired or whatever happens there because then she always ends up leaving and she's always my favorite character. And then it hurts me and Prue is the first character I ever loved and she was my first ever comfort character, favorite character and losing her destroyed my life. (laughs) I've truly never been the same since. Um, (laughs) I think I've maybe watched that episode one more time. Because I just, I can't. And the thing is, it's kind of preventable. Like, you kind of find out that if they had to come back sooner, they could have saved both her and Piper. But you also know they never could have saved Prue because she left the show. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. Thanks. I hate it. So much. It's worse when the character leaves the show. Like, yeah. <laughs> And she didn't even come back for, like, any throwback episodes. And, like, their grandma's dead, their mom's dead in the show, too. But they come back as ghosts. But because she left the show and, like, had, like, a bad relationship with, like, the producers and everything, they wouldn't have her back. So it's not like I could even wait for, like, a good scene of her as a ghost coming back to comfort them. No, I was just supposed to mourn her for life and never, ever see her again. That's the worst. No, it actually hurts me so bad, and I'm clearly still bitter. No, I don't blame you. I'm very bitter. It's very upsetting. That's and like I- the same thing with Edie. 
Yeah. Because I don't think, was Edie in the final scene? I don't think she was. I don't think so. Um, the next, well, the last one I can really group t- together um, is WandaVision. And if anyone's watched WandaVision, you know it's really upsetting. And for someone who's actually never seen anything Marvel and had no idea about Wanda or Vision, I saw it uncontrollably. And I did not have fun watching it. <laughs> also considering that these episodes came out on Fridays, and I'd watch them before I was going to work and putting my makeup on, and by the time I was done, I was sobbing. <laughs> so I love it. I've never seen it, but, like, I know what happens, and I can, yeah, imagine that it's pretty hard to watch. There's three um, scenes in particular that just make me want to die. Um, well, ironic, <laughs> because her kids die, and that causes me to sob. Um, it's good. It's the line that she says. She says, you know, a family is forever. We can never truly leave each other, even if we tried. Boys, thanks for choosing me to be your mom. Fuck. <laughs> They're gone. I was like, okay, this sucks. Oh, fuck. <sighs> and then it's Wanda watching Vision die for the third time, apparently. Rude. Um. So what what I have to find the full lines because they hurt. <sighs> Vision says, Wanda, I know we can't stay like this, but before I go, I feel I must know what am I? Wanda says, You vision are the piece of the mind stone that lives in me. You are a body of wires of blood and bone that I created. You are my sadness and my hope, but mostly you are my love. Then Vision says, we have said goodbye before, so it stands to reason. Then Wanda says, we'll say hello again. And then he dies. Okay, at first I'm like, that isn't that bad. It's so cheesy. And then, yeah, that line's pretty sad. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Mm-hmm. And then it's, the not. Last, it's, it's really not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then jumping a few episodes before this, I should have went in order. It's fine. Um, when she goes to Westview to build their home, and this is when Dijon's like dead for like the second I've time. I've seen maybe. this part. And she has the map or like the, the layout of Westview. And there's a note from Vision that says to grow old in. Yeah, no, I fucking sob. <laughs> this is unfair fair and rude well also because um wanda starts to sob too so like obviously i'm sobbing um (laughs) well i've never seen anything marvel but i feel like there's plenty of moments that make their fans just sob yeah i know there are and for like an action movie who knew there could be so much crying right (laughs) um so love that um and I will never watch WandaVision again because of it. And I am done talking about it because I don't want to cry. <laughs> oh, great. Now I get to talk about my other one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk about One Tree Hill because, like you, it's my last grouped up one. Um, I knew a lot of the spoilers going in. So I knew what this I knew that this first one was going to happen. But it's like widely regarded as like one of the most infamous and like saddest scenes in television history and it's the entire shooting episode yeah i've never seen well i've seen one episode once in hell, and i know about this episode like it's so sad and like the shooter he's not necessarily a bad guy i mean he's a bad person for like what he does but like you knew him in, like, the first few seasons, and he's just, like, a bullied kid, and he just snaps one day, and his acting is so heart-wrenching, and, like, I don't know, just the way he acts out his final moments and everything, like, it hurts me so bad. And then everyone else's reactions to it and how scared everyone is, and then Peyton and Lucas in the library, and Peyton thinking she's gonna die, and then Keith dies, and... Like, I literally, like, had to, like, I literally, like, just locked myself in my bedroom, and I'm like, I need to just watch this episode, I need to get it out of the way, I just need to be done with it so I can be over with it. 
it's so sad. Like, so sad. Like, I knew it was going to be sad, and I knew it was going to, like, really affect me. Um, but I didn't expect it to get me that bad. Like, I, there was, I, I started crying the second the episode started because I knew it was just going to jump right in there. I mean, it's an amazing episode. Like, it's one of the best episodes, but it's so hard to watch, and it's so sad. There's not an ounce of happiness. <laughs> and, like, the next, like, four episodes is just you dealing with the aftermath of it. And, like, losing Keith, who's, like, one of, like, the best characters in the show, the sweetest guy, he dies, and then Karen gets pregnant with his baby. Like, there's just so much that happens, and it's not okay. Um, But the next one I didn't know about is in season five, I believe, and it's Quentin, his funeral. I knew he was going to die. I accidentally got that spoiled in a freaking TikTok of all places. <laughs> Um, but, so, like, I knew he was gonna die, but, and I didn't really care, because I'm, like, whatever, he's, just, he's kind of, like, a side character, but then you get to love him, and he gains a really important and special relationship with Jamie, um, like, a five-year-old boy, so, he's, Jamie's making a, a cape for Quentin. I know, this because, is- because Quentin said that he liked Jamie's cape, so Jamie makes him one, and then Quentin gets shot and dies, <sighs> And then at the funeral, Jamie puts the cake on the funeral, on the casket. And I cannot, uh, I could cry right now just talking about it. It's so sad. It's <laughs> like, just this, like, children. little, just, like, this little tiny boy who got so close to this guy became, like, a, like, he became a role model, ro- yeah. role model for him. I don't know. There, it just, I, I don't know what the reason was. Like, he couldn't have died before. I mean, he couldn't have died after Jamie gave him the cape. Like, you had to do that to me. You had to make me that upset. It's just so rude. It's like a slap in the face, honestly. It hurts me a lot. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't like it. You, you go next, because I don't want to think about it. <laughs> um, I guess in the theme of just high school shows. High school shows are so sad, man, for no reason. Um, well, this one had to be sad because things needed to be addressed. <laughs> um, it's the quarterback episode of Blake. Uh, yeah. I, we talked about this before. I can't really fully remember when I stopped watching Glee. But, of course, I watched this episode. And yeah, you had to watch it. it. It started. I just... Well, it starts with seasons of love. And how do you not oh. cry? And then they just have the photo. <laughs> I'm going to cry right now. Oh, it was so sad. I think it just hurts more because it's it, a real life. Yeah. Um, But just everyone coming back and... I know people, like, pick on Will Schuster. Oh, yeah. He stole the Letterman jacket. And, um, oh, my God, what's his wife's name? Emma. Emma comes in and finds him sobbing in it. Oh, my God. I broke me. Yeah, goosebumps. <laughs> my work. <laughs> the other one that gets me is his mom. When she's like, I don't know how people do it. Like, how do yeah. you move on? How do you keep going? And I'm just like, you don't. <laughs> yeah. It just. Uh. <laughs> you don't have words. Also, Santana's performance. When she runs off. We'll get there in a second. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, when Santana just gets choked up, and, like, she acts so tough, and that she can deal with this, and, like, she can't. No. <laughs> uh, and, and then, and then, obviously, yeah, Rachel's. I don't even remember Rachel's. Rachel sings Make You Feel My Love. Oh, uh, yes. Because it was their song, apparently, and just, her tears are real. Yeah. Like, that... That was Leah. I mean, everything. Was oh, yeah. Acting. No one was acting in that episode. No, but her specifically is just like, that one hurts yeah. a lot. 
the whole episode is pain. Glee is not a great show. <laughs> no, it's but not. But it's got an incredible episode, and that's one of them. Yes. It's just really well done. It is. It's a really good tribute episode. It makes me upset, <laughs> but it's a really good Yeah, it's, it's really story. hard to do episodes when, like, someone dies while filming. We were yeah. Or about John Ritter and when they were filming Eight Simple Rules. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I don't know how people do Like, how do you just address that and then, like, move on with your show? Like, I just feel like it's so hard to. I and- know. I want to talk about that for a second because I actually forgot to tell you when we were talking about that earlier. This is a bonus one for you. I was just, like, because my parents will just, like, watch it randomly because it's just on TV. And I didn't know it was this episode when he dies. So I'm just sitting there, and I'm just, like, expecting, like, a funny episode. They're all having breakfast, and then the phone rings. And she, the mom answers it, and then she just drops it and runs out of the house. And she's like, where are my keys? Where's my purse? And then runs out. And um, I didn't know it was that episode, so yeah. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> it's just so hard when, like, real-life people die. Because yeah. you know that wasn't supposed to happen in the show. Yeah. And then you know all the cast reactions are real, and it just makes it it's so kind of, much harder to watch. They're usually some of their best episodes done in the show. Oh, yeah. Um, we left out one. I blocked it out of memory. What? Fred's episode in Riverdale. <laughs> um... <laughs> I want to talk about that for a moment because I feel like we need to mention it now if we're on the topic of real life deaths. Oh, wow. I remember exactly where I was when Luke Perry died because everyone in my class knew that I was a big Riverdale fan. So I just had someone come up to me and they're like, Sam, Luke Perry died. Like Fred Andrews in Riverdale died. And I'm like, no, he didn't. Like, you're lying. He's totally fine. Like, I know he's in the hospital. He's going to be fine, though. Then I had a text from my mom, too. And I'm just like, I want to come home. Like, I don't want to be here. I'm upset. Like, yeah. And I loved Luke Perry before Riverdale. Mm-hmm. And then when they did his episode, I-, I cried that entire episode. Like, even during commercial breaks, I was crying. Uh, it was like, so that might be my favorite tribute episode. Like, it was I so beautifully done to me. It was well, hard just because... I could have dealt with it the whole... Archie dealing with the hit and run stuff. I don't love yeah. that, but like I guess it was important to the story. The parade was cute. Definitely sobbed during that. Um, yes, I just yeah. it was so hard too with just the parents storyline and where all of the them were. Yeah. Like what Hiram was in jail. Alice. Alice was, was in a convent basically. Yeah. Um. So I I wish they weren't there. And we're able to join the town in mourning. Because what, we barely saw Alice and Hiram that episode. I feel like we barely saw any of the parents that episode. We weren't supposed to see Alice, I don't think, that entire season until she was found. Oh, right. Because we didn't see her until yeah. three. But they needed to have the parents. Okay, on yeah. Um, still beautifully done. I it's, just... Yeah. Because that was... I mean, all these deaths were unexpected. But that yeah. one, I think, really caught a lot of people off guard. Oh, absolutely. And, like, knowing, like, how close everyone was with Luke and Luke kind of being a father to everyone on the show, it just, good yeah. lord, man. True. I remember telling my coworker about it, like, the next day cause she also watched the show and she hadn't seen the episode yet. And I was telling her about it, and I'm like, I'm going to cry. I'm sorry, I can't finish telling you what this has happened because I can't. That's one of the, I think that's one of the, the celebrity deaths that affected me the most. Yeah. 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 Wow, we really did block that. Yeah, I don't know how I forgot that. I really did block that out. I mean, I blocked the quarterback episode out until I went on to BuzzFeed and just yeah. Googled it. Um, I know people talk a lot of trash about Riverdale, but, like... Yeah. That, yeah. Okay, move on to something else. <laughs> we got too real there. Find out what else can make us cry. Um... I'll talk about my next one. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna talk about Friends. Okay. It's a little bit. It's a little bit lighter. It's lighter. <laughs> um, but Friends didn't make me cry. Really, I mean, it's a sitcom. How yeah. often do you really cry in sitcoms? Um, but 
it's the final scene. And, like, I don't know. I feel like I just got, like, so attached to the show that, like, it has hurt even more. But specifically, it's not even them moving out, like, all that. It's the scene when it pans around the apartment. and you see, It starts with, like, the keys on the counter. And then it pans around the empty apartment. And every iconic thing is gone except for the frame on the door. Mm-hmm. And it just does, like, a slow zoom in to that. And then it fades to black. Yeah. It's probably one of the best, or one of the better finales that I've seen of a show. Mm-hmm. But it made me so sad. <laughs> like, that one really felt like an end of an era. I mean, I binged it, <laughs> so I can't really say that. But, like, it's so good. Like, yeah. It it makes me really upset, but, like, it was... I think it was a really good ending to the show. Yeah. I don't want them to move out. No. I did not want that to happen. <laughs> I don't like when people move away in shows. No. I want them all just to stay in one place. Even if it's unrealistic, I don't care. Um, but that one I at least was kind of okay with. But I don't appreciate the zoom in on the yellow picture frame. That was not okay. That felt like a personal attack. Yeah. Um, I had to just take a little break because I needed to find lines for my next one. And I just started crying. Love that. Um, so I have never actually watched the entirety of Boy Meets World. But watching Mr. Feeney's final lesson <laughs> just has me sobbing all the time. I think it's the music in the background. And just, like, his voice is so soothing and calming. But his final lesson is, oh, my God. Believe in yourself, dream, try, do good. And then they all come up to him and they're like, let him know how much he meant to all of them. And then... His last words are, I love you all, class dismissed, and I lose. <laughs> just absolutely lose it. Sam can literally justify it, because I just watched it. <laughs> it is sad. I've never seen it either, but now that you've, like, reminded me of it, I do remember seeing that scene. Oh, my God. It's just, like, you watched him through seven seasons, and he's always kind of like not like a hard ass but definitely wants to like try to teach you the lessons the hard way and like you don't fully appreciate them until you're an adult and I that's what happened with Corey Topanga and Eric and all of them and I think it hit them in that moment that like they still need life lessons and how are they going to do that without him and Yep. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. I'm it's over totally it. Fine. Uh, so my last one for TV shows, I have movies still left to talk about. Um, but my last TV show one is from Sex and the City. This is not a show that I expected to make me cry. Like I, it had its sad moments. Anything where Aiden got his heart broken, you know, that got me. But what makes me cry <laughs> is Samantha gets cancer. And she's already my favorite character, so that's already hard enough to deal with. But then she starts losing her hair, Um. and she's having a hard time about it. So, in solidarity, Smith, best boy ever, decides to shave his head with her. (sighs) Right. It's, it's like, a happy cry in a way, because, like, it's just a really great moment between the two of them. And you, like, see just how much Smith loves her. But, oh, my gosh. And I remember, like, my aunt is a big fan of the show as well. And she came over a few days later, and she's like, oh, where are you at? And I'm like, I just had the scene where Smith shaved his head. And she's like, oh, my God, isn't that horrible? I'm like, yes, it is. (laughs) Yes, it really was. And, like, it just came out of nowhere. Like, I feel like I was, like, cleaning my room or something when I was watching it. And all of a sudden, I just, like, stopped. And I'm like, what? No. (laughs) Please don't make me cry right now. Ugh. But I love it. That like mm, no, that whole storyline was rude, <laughs> but yeah. it got some really sweet moments, I guess. It did. I love Smith. That just really solidified him as one of my favorite men. <laughs> he doesn't beat Aiden. No. But that that 
that that scene brings them a little bit closer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have two more. <laughs> Lexi's not okay. Really not. Um. My second to last TV show is one that I kind of forgot about, and I was like, how much it hurt me until I saw a line from it <laughs> about an hour ago, and I was like, okay, nope, painful. Um, it's Jen Steph and Dawson's Creek. I watched Dawson's Creek probably. <laughs> has to be at least over five years now and I didn't like hate Jen I didn't like love Jen she kind of got on my nerves sometimes but her death was something I was not expecting to happen there was no reason for it no there really wasn't <laughs> at all the show was ending um, that's why I don't like finales <laughs> it was rude um so she makes like a um a video for her unborn child or is it born? I don't really remember. No, I think I, she is. Alive. I think she's Either young. Way. Yeah. So Jen makes a video for her child, which step one, <laughs> just cry. Um, and then she does die, and the fact that she outlived her grandma. Oh. And her grandma says that I'll see you soon, child. <laughs> Just, like, makes me sob. <laughs> um, once again, Jen's grandma, she was, like, a little bit of a hard ass, but, like, in, had the best intentions possible. And she took care of Jen for so many years. And the fact that she had a pass before she did <laughs> is not okay. Dawson's Creek is on my list. But then I remember that this scene exists, and I've seen this scene, and it just makes me never want to watch it. I, like, have a love-hate relationship with Dawson's Creek. I know a lot of people do. <laughs> but I feel like it's a show I just, I need to watch. Dawson's Creek is just kind of hard to watch, considering that everyone hates Dawson. <laughs> um, I think all the characters low-key get on my nerves just a little bit, but... Once again, it's been a while since I've seen the show, so I forgot what I have to really say about it. But just yeah. Jen's death, I now remember that it out. Any kind of like scene where the character leaves a letter or a video for their child or their husband or something like that. Rude. Very rude. Depressive. They did it in Parenthood too, and it makes me cry. <laughs> oh, that scene came up. Is that the cancer one? Yep. Yeah. I'm not she thinks she's gonna die, and it's like towards the beginning of her treatment, and she makes the video just in case. And yep. she winds up dying. What? She winds up dying. No. So they still showed it to us anyway. Oh, that's pretty. She goes to the hospital, and her husband finds it on the laptop, and watches it. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So I did not need that unnecessary trauma to carry around. But it's totally fine. Nope. It's totally fine. Um, my next ones are movies, though. Okay. Um, there, I feel like there are definitely more movies that make me cry, but these are the three off the top of my head that if I need to cry, these are what I turn to. Okay. And I'm going to do this in order of movies that make me cry less to most. Um, so I'm going to start off strong with The Notebook, <laughs> because I can get through this entire movie, except for, like, the last, like, ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Because I physically cannot do old people. Every old person is my grandparents. <laughs> and so then it just makes it hurt more. Fair. And, like, it was already going to be sad that they died. But it's the fact that one of the last lines is, like, he comes into her room. And she's like, do you think our love can take us away together? And he's like, maybe. And then they die holding hands. And, oh, my God, I'm just remembering. I forgot. I block this out every single time. There's a scene earlier in the movie when they're younger when Allie's like, I'm a bird. Say I'm a bird. And he's like, if you're a bird, I'm a bird. And after they die in the end of the movie, it goes to a shot of birds flying over the river. Nope. Mm-mm. Not okay. Nope. Not okay at all. I don't. Uh, I'm. Uh, it's, like, happy in a way because, like, they went together. 
Yeah. And, like, they were always in love, but it's just so gosh dang sad. Do not appreciate that. I never actually finished the book because the book, like, I made it halfway through and just, like, reading about it all is even worse. (laughs) Great movie. Great movie. But so sad. Like, so sad. I remember watching it at a sleepover because we all just, like, wanted to watch a romance movie. And we all just sat there and sobbed afterwards. Because none of them knew. I don't think a few of them had seen it. So we decided to watch it. And I knew it was coming. Nobody else did. So then we're all just crying at the end. And I'm like, yep, nope, shouldn't have watched that. I told you. Oh, my God. <sighs> uh, I have one more TV show. But I think I want to skip to my first movie to okay. go the Nicholas Sparks just wants to rip your heart out. <laughs> I don't know what you have. Okay. Yes, you do. Do I? Yeah. Oh, I do. Never mind. Um, I refuse to watch another Nicholas Sparks movie because of the scene. Um, I saw the last song in theaters as a child. Me too. And when Ronnie is, like, writing her song and then her dad just dies and she realizes what she's done after she hasn't played in how many months. And, yeah, he's dead. I lose it. <laughs> rude. Absolutely rude. Um, and it's Greg Kinnear. I know. Who's so cute. <laughs> was just also the scene where his brother want, is determined to finish that, what are they making, the stained glass window? And he's like, he has to finish it before And then it goes to the dies. church and you have the stained glass windows. No, that whole thing. <laughs> It's just one. I have wanted to rewatch that movie, but I just can't. You can't bring myself to it. Like I don't even. I don't even really remember any of it because I was like so young when I saw it. But like I just know I don't want to go through it again. <laughs> um, I don't remember it because I just want to block it out from my memory. No, literally. But sometimes I just like want to sing. Um. When I look at you and oh box. no, I love that song. It's not I don't song. even I don't even associate that song with the movie because I can't. <laughs> yeah, she will be loved is also kind of ruined for me because of that movie, but it's fine. The movie is just heartbreak. No, Nicholas Sparks is a sadist. Like this yeah. man is maybe ill, and yet I own an entire collection of his movies. I mean, I mean his books and his movies, but his books as well. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why. <laughs> like, you don't go into one of his movies or books expecting to be okay afterwards? No, absolutely not. Do you realize they all have the same theme, though? They all take place in, like, these towns and, like, mm-hmm. when do they die? All the covers look the same, too. If you look yeah. at the movie covers, all the movie covers are basically the same. I think there are maybe a, two or three of the movies that didn't make me cry. The books almost... The books I've read of the ones I didn't cry at in the movie make me cry in the book. But the choice is just bad, so that didn't make me cry. Knights in Rodanthe was fine, but not very good, so I didn't cry at that. And A Walk to Remember didn't make me cry, but the book made me bawl. I refuse to watch A Walk to Remember. A Walk to Remember is so good, though. No, I'm okay. It is really sad. I think I would cry now if I watched it, but when I first watched it, I was young, so I didn't get it, but... No, no Nicholas Sparks is insane. No, he is. I like, don't know who, who let him? And, but he writes a love story so good. He does. I will give him that. But who hurt him? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> All of them are dedicated to his wife, too. And I'm just like, bro, you're happily married. I don't think he is anymore. But, like, at the time, he was happily married. So, like, really, who hurt you? <laughs> he wrote one about a dog who dies. Who gets shot trying to save his owner. That's rude. Like, that's just a whole new level. Jail. Jail. And I found it in my thing. I was going to read it. And then I read that that happened. And I'm like, I want to throw this in the dumpster. Absolutely not. No. Anyway, this is uh, women not for Nicholas Sparks. Nope. (laughs) This is uh, the woman not for episode. (laughs) This is the anti-Nicholas Sparks episode. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Can we send this to him and just be like, you ruined our lives? Yes. You can. Okay. Okay. I'm done talking about this. <laughs> okay, good. Um, my next one. Hmm. Okay, these two are kind of on the same level, but this one hurts me just a touch less. And it's stepmom. 
However, this is the movie that if I need a good cry, this is the one I put on. But it's also the shorter of the two. You'll realize why I watched this one instead. Um, it already has a sad premise. Oh, wow. Like, it's about... You've never seen it, so I, I get to tell you about it. Yeah. Um, I get to tell all you all about it, too. So you're going to get it spoiled for you. Go watch it if you haven't seen it and come back here. Because it's incredible. Um, but it's written by Julia Roberts and Susan Sarandon. And they produced it. Like, they just wanted to work on this movie together, so they just made a movie for each other to work in, <laughs> which I love. But it's about Susan Sarandon and her husband. They get a divorce, mm-hmm. and they have two kids, and the dad uh, starts dating Julia Roberts. The kids don't like her. It's a whole stepmom thing. But then Susan's character gets cancer, so she has to come to terms with the fact that, like, she has to, like, be okay with Isabel, who is Julia Roberts' character, because that's going to be the stepmom of her children. That's going to be who raises her children when she goes. And they end up creating this really beautiful friendship. But it's not even that that gets me. It's the damn kids. It's, oh, like, this. fine. It's, like, fine for the movie. Like, you're like, okay, yeah, this is sad. Whatever. You know, like, yada, yada. She's going to die. It's going to be sad. There is a scene early on in the movie where her son, they're on the phone together and, or something like, or maybe it's just in person. Uh-huh. Uh, but she's like, hey, or he's like, hey, let's have a dream date tonight. And they have, they, it's um, where they go to bed, they dream about each other, they meet in a certain place in their dreams, and they spend their dream together kind of thing. Just like uh-huh. a little cute thing between them. So at the end of the movie, <laughs> it's, um, he goes up to her. And she's, like, probably going to die really soon. And it's Christmas morning and everything like that. And he goes up and he's, like, nobody loves you like I do. And she's, like, no, nobody ever will. And he's, like, I'll see you in my dreams. Like, mm. No, absolutely not. But the other scene that gets me before that one, this is when the tears start flowing. But that's one where, like, it actually just, like, fully wrecks me. But the one that gets them going is Julia and Susan are at dinner together, and they're just kind of talking about, like, she's going to die, Julia has to be there for the kids and everything like that. I need to find you the exact quote of this. Oh, God, okay. I'm nervous. (laughs) Be nervous. It hurts me so bad. And also, just, like, because it's Julia Roberts and Susan Sarandon, like, two of the best actresses possibly ever, so... Like I said, they're at dinner here. They're talking about how she's going to pass away. That Julia has to step up. This is Julia's character talking first. I never wanted to be a mom. Well, sharing it with you is one thing, but carrying it alone the rest of my life, always being compared to you. You're perfect. They worship you. I just don't want to be looking over my shoulder every day for 20 years, knowing that someone could have done it right, done it better, the way that I can't. You're Mother Earth incarnate. You ride with Anna. You know every story, every wound, every memory. Their whole life's happiness is wrapped up in you. Every single moment. This is when it gets me. (laughs) Don't you get it? Look down the road to her wedding. I'm in a room alone with her, fitting her veil, fluffing her dress, telling her no woman has ever looked that beautiful. And my fear is that she'll be thinking, I wish my mom was here. And then Susan says... And my fear is she won't. (laughs) I can't explain, like, the pain that, like, sears through my body. And it's just, like, one lone tear. Like, like, Julia just, like, says that. And then Susan's just staring at her. She's like, my fear is she won't. (laughs) It's so freaking sad, man. Like, this movie actually hurts me to my very core. But it's so good at the same time. But, like, I literally needed a good cry, like, a couple weeks ago. So I decided to watch this. And I'm literally just, like, laying in my bed bawling. And then I didn't stop crying for an hour because it just finally got the juices rolling. But, like, that quote, I just needed to read you the full thing so you can get the full. No, that was pain. (laughs) (laughs) You need to watch the scene. You need to watch that movie. When I'm looking for a good... I have to be in the mood for the good cry. It's so good. Great. Great. Just the last 20 minutes. Not even. Probably like the last 10 minutes. Just full pain. Love it. The rest of the movie you can get through perfectly fine. It's got a great little dance sequence of 
Susan and the kids singing I'm, to Ain't No Mountain. Yeah. Some of the last 10 minutes come and hit you like a train. It's great. It's wonderful. Beautiful. Beautiful. Just wonderful. <laughs> <sighs> On that note, Lexi, what's your next one? Okay, I'm going back to the TV shows real quick because I just have one last one. I know. And this is, I talk about Ted Lasso way too much, so I will keep this one short. Let's do and, a Ted Lasso episode. Yes. I feel like I've talked about this episode during every single time I've talked about Ted Lasso. How can you not? Um, it's called, it's the episode No Weddings and a Funeral. And it's this scene where Ted explains what happens to his father. And it goes back and forth between Ted talking about his father and his oh. dad and Rebecca talking about how she found out her father was cheating. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Just no. the way it's shot, too. It's so beyond perfect. Jason Sudeikis, once again. <laughs> no, Jason is incredible here. So good. Because it's like, it like still he's... mind blows me just the fact what Ted Lasso is. Like, you think season one, you're watching this cute little comedy, and then season two, you're just like, no, this man is full on broken inside, and he <sighs> acts like everything's okay. And you're like, I feel for him. And, and, like, you kind of feel that whole reveal kind of building up throughout the season. Like, he yeah. starts having the pan attacks and everything. But when it finally does, it just hurts. Because we never fully seen him. No, we have seen him break down. But, like, this is the reason why we know he's breaking down. Yeah, like, we saw him break down. But, like, this is him breaking. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, like, he oh. leaves there, like, kind of a shell of himself. Yeah. It's so hard to watch. Like, you, like, Jason just, like, acts it so well. I know. And then he just shows up to the funeral, and they sing, Never gonna give you the Oh. Why is this one of my favorite episodes? No, it's, like, one of my favorites, but Mm. one of the hardest to watch. And it's just like it's it sounds so weird like like it's a family episode but like it's a family episode because they're all there for her yeah and i just think it's really cruel that you give hannah and jason an emotional scene that intertwine with each other because they're both so phenomenal that you really can't do that to me nope absolutely not <sighs> okay i'm not about them <laughs> Let me talk about my last movie. I don't know like what I said, it is, and I'm nervous. Yeah, you'll figure it out in a second. Um, so, like I said, I'm doing this from, like, least to most hurting. And if you uh-huh. watched our comfort movies episode, you would know what this is. It's Titanic. Oh, I should know. <laughs> like, I used to love this movie as a kid, but as I got older... Yeah. It just, like, I mean, it always kind of upset me as a kid. I didn't like watching Jack die. But, like, then as I got older, like, I physically wasn't able to watch it. <laughs> and it just became one of those movies that I can literally probably only watch once a year because it makes me so upset. Like, to the point I will be hyperventilating while crying. <laughs> and it, it's always like when that, when the iceberg first hits the boat and everything starts going downhill and you're just like, hey, this is sad. This is scary. Like, And then it gets to the scene where the old couple is laying in bed together and the mom is tucking her kids into bed so they just sleep through it. Mm. And then Jack dying and Rose trying to get the freaking (laughs) whistle to go and get the vote to come to her and the music and... Mm. (laughs) But the part that also gets me probably the most is at the end of the movie when she dies and it goes through like all the pictures on her dresser and everything and then it goes to her walking up the stairs walking through the titanic and passing everybody who died on the titanic and jack is waiting for her on the stairs because her heaven is on the titanic with all the people she met there i never knew that she died there like i never knew that was her death 
thing. I thought that was just a dream she was having. Then I found out it was her dying, and I've never been the same. I'm sorry, what? You didn't know that? I really never watched the Titanic. Right. Yeah, okay, so like at the ending... <laughs> great, you're going to make me explain this, and I'm going to cry. So at the ending, Rose is, like... probably like 95 or something like that at this point she's old so she passes away in her sleep and it like pans around her room and it's just like showing all the pictures of her life and everything and um she had said earlier she's like I didn't even have a picture of him and everything and it's just really sad that whole moment Yeah, yeah, yeah and then it goes into like a first camera like a first person view of the going through the titanic like the court like the ways and everything I feel like it's also, like, it pans underwater, and it's, like, Titanic, like, all, like, messed up and, like, waterboard and everything, and then it slowly comes back to, like, life and everything. Like, it comes back to not being underwater, not being broken or torn in two, and all the people who died in the Titanic are there. Every person that Rose talked to is there, and she's walking up the grand staircase, and Jack turns around and is there and welcomes her to the afterlife because her heaven is with him and the rest of the people on the Titanic. And it's really sad. <laughs> Wait, so she did survive the Titanic? She survived. Okay. Jack didn't. I, I forgot you hadn't seen this. I have no parts of it. Yeah, I've... I know you've seen enough of it to, like, get it. But it's Everyone a knows long that. movie. <laughs> it's a long movie. That's why I watched Stepmom if I need a good cry. Fair. That's <laughs> only two hours. This is, like, nearing four. <laughs> yeah, that is fair. Yeah, um, I do. I've been itching to watch Titanic again, but like I need time to recover. <laughs> there. <laughs> um, I, I don't even know. Like it's probably because it's a real life thing that happened. Yeah. But I don't know. There's just a million things that get me in the movie. I remember going and seeing it on a date. Oh. Bad choice. I think it was like the 25th anniversary of it. Okay. Um. No, I guess it would have been the 20th anniversary of it. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That wasn't fun. I hyperventilated from crying too hard. Right. I was sobbing. My mom made fun of me. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Such a good movie. Highly recommend it. Uh, That's why I also don't get why it's Macy's comfort movie. Yeah. yeah. I don't get it, but, like. This is how long it is. <laughs> the aesthetics are great. Oh, yeah, definitely. But the pain it causes me, man, oh, man. I had a friend, um, and it was, like, one of her and her family's favorite movies, so I would watch it when when I went over there, and I would just, like, I remember vividly just, like, sitting there next to her, and I'm just crying, and my head's, like, near her shoulder, and I'm just, like, crying onto her shoulder. (laughs) It's not fun, and then the soundtrack gets me, and then they come in with some Celine... And that gets me even more. Moral of the story, Titanic, saddest movie yeah. ever. Now I want to talk about it anymore. I don't blame you. Okay. Um, I have two more. You do? Yeah. Did one, you just add them? I think it's shared a little bit. Is what? what? One I think is a little shared. Okay. Okay. The I'm first right. one? is um my girl because once again you can't do anything with kids without making me want to cry um it's been a while since i've seen this movie i it's been a while since i've seen any of these because i hate things that make me cry so i, I just refuse watching them at all costs but if you've ever seen my girl um you know what scene I'm talking about. You probably already know about the scene, even if you haven't seen My Girl. I knew about it before I went in. I watched it with the kid I babysat at the time. I'm clearly a terrible babysitter for letting her watch this. Yeah. She was fine. I was not. Just the whole... I mean, the whole scene where she goes back to find... What? It's a ring, I'm pretty sure. Ring? Bracelet? So. Necklace? Some type of jewelry? And um, he sacrifices himself to bees, which he is highly allergic to, and then dies from getting stung by millions of bees. I think it's the weirdest part is that, like, his funeral is in her house because her house is a funeral home. 
which makes it a lot weirder. Yeah. Um, but then she comes down and like they're having a nice, which also she doesn't want to talk about it, Lex. <laughs> but wait, she doesn't even attend his funeral. She like is hiding in her room and then comes down. Yeah, because I she's like eight. Are you really expecting her to go to a? Well, I guess she's kind of obsessed with death throughout the movie, so she doesn't really have an excuse. But this is her best friend. This is Thomas J. <sighs> but her best friend. Um, but yeah, so she goes down and he is dead in a coffin and like the priest is saying like some nice words and she's just sobbing walking up to the casket and he she says where's his glasses he can't see without his glasses and she's sobbing over her dead best friend and I start sobbing over her dead best friend (laughs) what was the reason like, why couldn't they have just given us a nice, cute little movie? With- I don't know. Like, why? Why did you have to kill him? And why did you have to do that scene? Like, mm. It's so good, though. And then her getting pulled away from the coffin hurts, too. That just reminded me of another one I have, too. I hate this episode. <laughs> yeah. We're almost on loop, which is great. Um, I'll just briefly touch on mine that just for me yeah, reminded so of. We'll, um, we'll wrap up with mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my other one that I just remembered, I think I kind of touched on it last episode. Uh, when Denny dies in Grey's, and uh, I loved Denny, but when Izzy has to literally get pulled away from his corpse and... Chasing Cars is playing in the background. She's like, we were going to get married. I could have saved him if I hadn't have changed my dress four times. And just, like, she blames herself, and she's curled up next to him, and then Alex has to pick her up and hold her as she's crying, and then she quits being a doctor afterwards because she couldn't save him, and it's just so sad, and I hate Grey's Anatomy, and Shonda Rhimes does not deserve anything. <laughs> Talk about your next one. I won't, I won't think about oh, it. Oh, I don't think this one's going to be much better. Mm, great. So the last one. Do I know this one? <laughs> yes, you do. Huh. Um, if any of you watched our comfort episode, you know that our favorite movie is Mamma Mia. Um, you know the second one. Oh, I hope you watched. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so you know how we feel about the second one. But this one particular scene in the second one, <laughs> just pain all around. Um, so it's when they sing My Love, My Life. I mean, the song is already beautiful to begin with. But then they bring in Donna's angel to, like, (laughs) sing with Sophie. And I lose it. Like, watching this in theaters, not knowing Donna's gonna die... And then they announce it in the beginning of the movie. Like, not announce it, but, like, you figure it out in the beginning of the movie. And then it's just weighing on you the whole time. So you're already sad the entire movie because it's just dropped on you and you've been, like, a fan of it for, you know, ten years. And then mm-hmm. you're sitting in a theater being so happy that Mamma Mia is back. And then, you know, they kill off your favorite character. And then they bring her back as a ghost at the end to sing with her daughter who had the best relationship and cutest thing ever. And you just want to cry and die. And it's not yeah. okay. It's it's the song. It's yeah. The- while we're on the topic of Mamma Mia 2, though, Super Trooper makes me cry in the second movie. It's only because of Donna. It's because I have a video. I will send it to you because I'm not posting it on here because it's so embarrassing. Um, but it's the scene at the ending. I'm already crying from my love, my life. Like, this is how the movie yeah. ends. And so then it goes to Super Trooper. And it's, not, it's the end of the movie. So, like, everybody's alive, yada, yada. But then it, Meryl comes up and she starts saying, she's like, facing 20,000 of your friends. And then Sophie, Do- no, Tanya and Rosie come up and sing with her and they're the dynamos again. But then, then this bitch decides to go through the audience and she's like, I'll be there when you arrive. And she's dancing with Sam because she left him and she will be there when he arrives. I just, I want to talk to whoever decided. the realization of that. <laughs> You're welcome. Yep, you're welcome. 
I just want to talk to whoever decided that they could kill Meryl Streep. Meryl, I know this was Meryl, like, I, yeah, your Meryl, it's your fault. I, Women against Meryl Streep. <laughs> oh my god, absolutely not. Even though... She made you cry again the other day. I know, I was hysterically crying the other day. Demon lady. Meryl, I love you, Meryl, but you're a demon. Yeah, you can't... I, I get your no sequel rule. But, like, this was, like, an original sequel. <laughs> so, like... But, like, also, like, why did they choose to kill her? Yeah. Once again, couldn't be going banking hotels in, like, the mainland of Greece? No. Yeah, no. No, they had to kill her. I think that's it. <laughs> that's yeah. enough of, like, a cry fest for the night. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing next week. Oh! Okay, that's kind of fun. Give us two fictional characters and we'll choose who we date. Oh. Who we would rather date. That might be minimal planning. That is definitely minimal planning. And okay. we will use, like, some of the other suggestions that we didn't use from last time. Yeah, so if you haven't, go drop some of your favorite characters on our character doc, which is linked in the description and in our bios on our social medias and everything. And yeah. But that's it. Yep. Um, sorry if we made you cry, but maybe we gave you some inspiration to go cry. Who knows? Yeah, it's technically not our fault because someone suggested this episode. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining us on this episode of Enter the Fangirls. You can keep up with us on social media. Our Twitter is Enter Fangirls, and our YouTube and Instagram are Enter the Fangirls. Make sure you follow us wherever you listen to your podcast, and we cannot wait for you to join us next week. <laughs> Once again, I'm Lexi. I'm Sam, and this has been Edge of the Fangirls. <laughs>